What happens when a terrorist hunting drone and a resupply helicopter drone join forces with fire departments? Well, fires get stopped more effectively. While drones have already been supporting American firefighters for several decades, this is a new generation of machines helping to fight fires. Stalker XE and K-Max could reinforce firefighters and potentially reduce the risks of lives being lost. To tell us more about this, we are joined on set by defense specialist and war games columnist Allison Berry. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So how exactly would this work? Right now, it's a theoretical concept. Well, they, they recently tested uh, in U.S. Uh, sort of jurisdiction, they tested whether this could actually work with air traffic control, right? Because even though everyone's really excited about using drones in U.S. airspace and it's going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, the rules and regulations of framework are, are getting nailed down. Uh, it's not just that simple, right? Like exactly. You have, to have to prove that you can plug and play and be safe and not put any risk to uh, U.S. citizens. So the idea here is that um, KMAX is a big drone, right? I right. saw in the picture, it's kind of helicopter size. It is actually a helicopter. And it's sort of like a robot helicopter, right? It can fly its own missions. It doesn't have a human in the cockpit. You don't see anyone uh, waving at you, no pilots. It's, it's actually the robot that can take itself on missions. Stalker is a much smaller drone. And this drone is one that can be launched by a bungee. So if you think of kind of like a slingshot, it's a smaller scale. It's about a 12, XC is about a 12 foot wingspan. Um, so it's a much smaller drone. And this drone launches normally in uh, war zones to provide information on say troop movements, enemy movements, uh, mm -hmm. to track terrorists, things like that. So KMAX is a bigger drone and that's jo its job in the war zone has more been resupply. So the idea there is when, what do we do when we need to get uh, a lot of uh, resources? It could be ammunition, it could be food supplies, any sort of supplies. Water supplies. Water supplies to troops that are um, in a remote location. Maybe it's going to be going through a hostile area. CAMAX has been really handy in deploying and doing those missions, uh, and it removes that risk right to human life. Because if we can take the human crew out of the cockpit, then that reduces the risk to them. And so the idea here then is to take the KMAX and use it for firefighting in the U.S. and have it be able to deploy water resources, say in Southern California in a major wildfire? Great example. So the idea is how can we transition this technology? I mean, so much innovation has been going into military technology, as you know. Um, that's one good thing that uh, has been produced by the wars uh, is incredible innovations. So the idea is how do we harness that technology and use it for other purposes that might be able to benefit fit uh, American citizens right here are civilians on the homeland and firefighting was one of those capabilities because it can carry KMAX can carry so much it can carry 6,000 pounds of cargo so that could be 6,000 you know pounds in weight of, of water and that how it does, can deploy over a fire yeah so how does that 6,000 compare to the current capabilities of planes that go over and smaller vehicles that are currently in place in a natural disaster great question so uh, one of the big advantages here is like reduced to uh, reducing the risk to human life like we just touched on about in the war zone, right. right? Like we have a lot of brave air crew um, and firefighters that are going into these dangerous areas, these uh, forest fires, for example. There's heat issues, there's visibility issues. Right. So the idea here is, again, let's reduce the risk to life and let, let's reallocate those resources and those humans um, to things that they can specialize, free them up for other things where we could use technology to take on that risk and deploy the water. So um, the great advantage is like one is that visibility. So sometimes it can operate in conditions where human crews, um, it would be too high of a risk for them to go into. Two is then the repeat missions, right? Because you can have KMAX go in and out, in and out. There's no issue of human fatigue. So they can run a lot more missions hmm. um, than the traditional aircraft that might be going in to fight fires. How far are we away from seeing this actually happen? Such good question. So they just took a really important next step, and it doesn't sound all that exciting, right? Testing whether it can fit into air traffic control, but it's incredibly important. As you know, they can't run these missions unless all this stuff, all these right. boxes have been ticked, and everyone's happy that it's going to be safe. And you know, it's supposed to be increasing safety, not um, putting people at risk. So it's sure. in everyone's best interest that all these steps are followed. Uh, so the technology is already there. Stalker and KMAX have been incredibly powerful tools at war zones. KMAX, for example, with the U.S. Marines alone, uh, I think it deployed. Uh, uh, in the three-year period, it delivered over uh, 4.5 million pounds of cargo. So um, that's, it's been heavy lifting. It's doing a lot of work for us. It's proven as military technology, absolutely. So there's no concerns about that. It's really just at this point. So a few years away, maybe? I, I think so. That was, the, that was a very long answer for you. But <laughs> we're getting to the, yeah, I think probably hopefully a few years away, a few years away. But I'd like to see them trialing it more, like, more in a more practical application, uh, real-life scenarios sooner than that. So other than natural disasters, war zones, where else do you see this potentially being deployed? 
Well, this is an interesting combination because it's Stalker working with KMAX, right? So what's right. cool about it is that Stalker uses it, instead of tracking terrorists with all the great suites of technology it has on it, what it does is find um, hot spots and intensity and stuff. And it communicates, it's sort of like the boss, and it directs the other robot, so to speak, the other drone as to where to dump the water. So that's a unique configuration that I see really specifically applying to firefighting. But there's also other applications. You could see them working in tandem, for example, in uh, humanitarian applications. So uh, what if there's another natural disaster? It could a major be major earthquake in Haiti earthquake, or something like that. Flooding, things like that, where you could see that Stalker could go out, look for people in need, find people who need help, and then it could direct KMAX to go and uh, supply those supplies. It could be fresh water, it could be medical aid, things like that. But what are the disadvantages here? What do the critics say in terms of deploying this kind of technology? That's a great question. It's important to be fair. Uh, I'm clearly passionate about it. I'm a big fan of both platforms. Uh, I should mention that Stalker comes from Skunk Works, which is the, one of the most illustrious, amazing shops that we have in the United States. It's a Lockheed Martin run shop that has incredible roots and history here that done, has done incredibly important innovations. So I'm a little bit biased in that respect because I, I love both platforms. But I think what critics would say is that uh, there's no replacement right for the human pilot. And I, I would agree with that. You know, there is no replacement. Our, our pilots are phenomenal, um, whether they're um, serving the military or whether they're helping with the forest fires and stuff. Our pilots are phenomenal. So while you can't replace a human, let's leverage technology um, to free them up to do other tasks. Interesting. Well, Allison safe Barry, we you always bring us something interesting to chew on. Thank you so much oh, for joining thanks us Thanks for having today. me. You can check out Allison's article on foxnews.com. It's her War Games column. Check it out. I'm Geraldine Kent, and you are watching Tech Take.